It's something no one ever plans for, but when a serious crash happens, these are the police officers who can look at a collision and through a careful study of physics and the environment, determine what happened in the seconds leading up to the crash. Okay. Constables Brent Bourne and Chris Y. Rostock work within the Medicine Hat Police Service Traffic Unit, but are specially trained in collision reconstruction, called upon when a crash involves significant property damage or a fatality. While most police investigations rely heavily on witness statements, these reconstructionists look solely at the road and physical evidence to help rewind time and figure out how fast a vehicle was moving, who is responsible, and whether or not charges should be laid. In order to do this, the officers use a system called a total station that works like survey equipment. And what that does is we will plot all the points of the collision scene so we'll measure the roadway, the sidewalks, the position of the traffic signs, traffic lights. Uh, if there's crosswalks we'll measure those in uh, and then the vehicles at their rest positions. Uh, we'll also uh, measure in any road evidence so if there's tire marks or if a pedestrian gets hit their body will leave a skid mark which we call body scuffed and so a lot of times we're on our hands and knees on the road surface looking for these pieces of evidence because they're so small, especially with a pedestrian, you're not dealing with vehicles with giant pieces of debris or headlights that are breaking off. We're looking for, like I say, uh, the tiniest uh, piece of clothing that'll blend into a black road fairly easily. Reconstructing a crash can take several hours, and just as it is with any investigation, preserving ground zero is key to finding out the truth. A key for us is to not have the vehicles moved after the crash happens. That makes things a lot easier for us because the tire marks in most cases will lead up to that vehicle. If the vehicles are moved, then we have to look at, well, what type of tread pattern is on this tire and is that consistent with this vehicle or does it look like it matches a vehicle or doesn't match and it's from a vehicle that drove through here and did a, had to brake hard a couple weeks ago. So it can easily be um, three hours minimum, I would say, and up to um, a while ago, we had a collision scene shut down for almost uh, nine hours, I think it was, before we got the vehicles moved out of there and tow trucks and everything too. But the work doesn't stop there. Once back at the station, the data is turned into a digital rendering of the scene. So basically we'll download the points that we uh, took out at the scene and from there we'll turn those points into a three-dimensional picture so we can look at different aspects. We can look at the point of view of the driver, what they were seeing at the time. Uh, if it's a pedestrian crash, we can look at what the, what the pedestrian might have seen at the time um, and it gives us an idea of if there were obstructions so that the driver wasn't able to see the pedestrian or um, what else might have been there at the scene at the time, whether it's the sun or something else. Um, that made it difficult for one of the drivers involved to to not be able to react properly to, to avoid the collision. It almost sounds like something out of a movie, but Brent says these real life advancements in science and technology have made a huge difference in their work. When I first started in traffic nine years ago, we f would have physically had to hand draw a scale diagram for a collision scene and we were measuring the collision scenes with tape measures and uh, the total station survey equipment saves us immensely with, uh, with time at the scene because we're not dealing with the wind blowing our tape measures all around or that sort of thing. So, um, but it, like I say, it still is very time consuming. But even just some of the other courses that, that we've had the chance to be on, um, one is an occupant kinematics course which basically relates how people move in, in vehicles during a collision and relating the injuries that they received in that collision to figure out where they were seated. Um, you know, they didn't have that when I first started in the unit and it's something that we've been able to, to get trained on so that we can use that in, in cases where maybe somebody says, no, I wasn't the driver and we want to be able to prove that, that they were the driver. Although crashes happen every day in Medicine Hat, only about 5 to 10 of them are deemed serious enough to require a full reconstruction each year. The work involved in the process can seem daunting to most due to the amount of knowledge required of math and physics, but these officers say they're up to the challenge. I love being able to go to a collision scene and prove what happened at that scene. So if somebody says, I was going 30 kilometers per hour, I like to be able to 
compile the evidence to say no, you actually were speeding and that was the cause of the crash or uh, being able to, to figure out what happened at that collision scene. Why did that person not see that other vehicle? What caused that? Was it the sun glare or was it a sign blocking their view or were they going too fast? You know, when were they able to see this? When did they react? Maybe why didn't they react? Um, different human factors that are that are involved in crashes that you might not necessarily think of when you initially go to a crash, but as you start to work through it and start to figure out, well, she couldn't see him at this point, why couldn't she see him at that point? Um, different things like that. It's just kind of like Brent said, putting that puzzle together and we, see, we always see the end. Everybody always sees the end, but we want to know what happened at the beginning.